truth is ever to be found in simplicity and not in the multiplicity and confusion of things. Sir Isaac Newton. My friends, we keep it as simple as we can. How do we do that? Well, we use this one indicator, the STC, at the bottom of our screens. We use the Heiken Ashi version of the Japanese candlesticks. And we use a very simple 200 exponential moving average that when we're below it, we're looking for short trades. And when we're above it, we're looking for long trades. Now, for those of you who know options, you know that short trades are puts, long trades are calls. If you're dealing with, with ETFs, then what are we doing? Of course, we're looking for the ETF itself when we're above the 200 EMA. We're looking at the inverse fund if there is one, like there is with S, uh, SPY. That would be SH, like there is with the NASDAQ 100. That would be PSQ. These are single shorts. And TBF with 20-year bonds. There's even a short fund for XBTF, for Bitcoin. That is B-I-T-I. And of course, you notice that when I flip those two up, they're the exact opposite of each other. They have different prices, but all of these inverse funds are set up to move converse of the underlying fund. So when you look at the S&P 500, as reflected by the exchange-traded fund SPY, you can see that it's going up for the day. If you look at SH, and we load that up, the price is going to be different, but it's set up to move the same percentage, which is all you really care about. Because if you buy $100 worth of SH, you're going to expect it to go up. If it goes up 2%, You'd expect it to go up $2 for the day. If it goes down, should go down $2. Now, again, same percentage, not same price, but you don't really care about that. You care about whether or not it's moving the same as the underlying stock now, or ETF rather. Now, keep in mind, inverse funds are completely different than your regular fund. The fees are higher. They revalued many times on a daily basis. So it does, it can magnify losses if you don't know what you're doing. But of course, we're not giving market advice. We're asking you to practice trade with us. Practice, learn how it works. Now let's jump into these charts. We see stocks are up for the day. Everything else is down. Let's jump into the S&P 500. Of course, this latest short trade we had was successful very quickly, 3.32% down. And of course, we're still red on the STC. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for this up move to continue, things to flip over from red to green, like they did after this last successful trade uh, before the prior one, so two trades ago, a 4.06% down. Then when it flips over, we let it reset and then when it flips back, we jump in. It's very simple, but again, requires practice, requires some expertise that you can build over time to 15, 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. Where are we on the two day right now? It's still green. Now we were cautious because of that, but we do see things starting off this week heading down. And of course, the second down candle. Things are still green though on the STC on the weekly. They're still red and have been red for a while. We do see a green spinning top starting the week. So we will keep an eye on things after we bounced off the 200 EMA about four weeks ago. That is on the weekly. Now let's take a quick look. By the way, the S&P 500 up almost a percent, 0.96% for the day. We look at the NASDAQ 100. It's up 1.10%. We had a nice trade over a day and a half and it yielded us 4.20%. Again, went from green to red on the STC. And of course, we've seen things bottom out and start moving up, still red on the STC. The two-day has gone to red on this latest candle. And again, two down candles there. Rather nice down movement. Weekly has been confirmed and actually is well below the 200 EMA now. So we'll be waiting for these charts, just like the S&P 500, to reset, go to green, 
move above this center area where you see these two lines here, reset completely for us, and then move over. Hopefully that will be occurring in the not too distant future. But again, we don't have to push it. We're looking for successful trades. First rule of trading, don't lose money. Second rule, make money. We did have things at the end of this week in the afternoon on Friday. We went from green to red. Now, we like to see things really move down strongly. Didn't start moving down strongly on Friday. Didn't start moving down strongly on Monday morning, but did in the afternoon where we saw the red drop enter that gray zone. That's good to see. We did enter that trade. We're hoping to make 2.85%, risking 1.43%. That is a two to one reward to risk ratio. That's what we always do. And that loss ban is predicated. You see that 135 there, that is the average true range. Where do you see that? I'll have to open this up for you. Look at that number right there in the red. You notice when I line things up here, it's 135. That's how we set it, 135 ticks or 270 for a two to one reward to risk ratio. That's where we are. That's what we're hoping to gain. We'll see how that works for us. We're heading down on the half day. Two day is red also and a nice red down candle forming there. Weekly is also down. And of course, bonds are way, way, way below the 200 EMA. Look at how much I have to tie. This is the weekly chart you can see how much bonds have crashed. Well, we're trying to take advantage of that. TBF is the short fund that we jumped into, and we'll see how this runs for us. Now, we did get stung this last week. Not everything is always roses, and we'll be the first to admit when things don't work out the right way, they did not work for us in gold. We had hoped to cash in in gold like we did on the, the S&P 500, like we did in the NASDAQ 100. Not so in gold. We jumped in, things reversed against us pretty soon to within literally two cents of being pulled out there after just a couple of days. Then we had a screwy afternoon that could have taken us out also. And again, some of you did jump out. I'm sorry, that's, uh, yeah, that is the afternoon on Wednesday. Then, of course, Thursday, things bounded down only to turn around and hammer up on Friday and put the screws to us. And, of course, what's happening today? Down a little bit, 0.40%. But we see we're still green on that STC. It is moving up quite markably. Now we look at where we are on the two-day. It's gone to green. It's green both on the STC and on the candle waiting to see what's going to happen there. Where are we on the weekly? We have a green candle. Now, we've seen that before, and then gold crashed for several weeks after the last one on the 3rd, uh, beginning the week beginning the 3rd of October. We'll see where things go at the beginning of this month. Are they going to head back up in gold and push through the 200 EMA, and gold prices are going to take off? My friends, I would love that. I would absolutely love that because I love buying gold. It's the real thing. Think about it. Gold is real. It has been a store of wealth for millennia, and I would like to watch it take off again. Is that happening? Don't know. Can't tell you. Down for the day, 0.40%. So we'll keep an eye on things. We'll let you know as the week progresses where gold is going to. You can tell for the last day and a half sort of where it stalled out. So we'll wait, watch, and see. Lastly, we'll go to Bitcoin. This is XBTF, the Bitcoin short, down for the day 1.44%. So not looking so good today. We can see where Bitcoin's dipped here recently, moved up, dipped, and then popped up again. Is Bitcoin sort of over those doldrums? Well, as we move out, and if you didn't watch at the end of this week, the charting crypto and commodities, I would really encourage you to do that. You can see in the recent past where Bitcoin's been quite a bit higher and then died on the vine. This is the one reason that we don't just look at the short-term charts. We like to look at short-term, intermediate, and long-term. That is respectively half-day, two-day, 
and weekly. We're at the two-day right now. We see it going up for several days. And again, like we said, down some for the day. We look at where we are on the weekly. And we got a ways to go before we even get to the most recent highs back in August. Now, Bitcoin's bottomed out somewhere around this 1820 mark or so, hoping that's going to be our base. Things are going to recover and really hammer up strong. We look at 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin because I've been showing you the Bitcoin Future ETF. It's a closed-end, uh, short-term, closed-month uh, chart. But I do like it because you can buy it on any website where they do, where they allow you to buy stocks, buy and trade stocks, any of these online brokers, as opposed to having to go to a crypto exchange, which some of which had a whole lot of problems when the crypto market crashed. So again, encourage you to practice trade XBTF. If you're really interested in Bitcoin, pay attention to that. It's liquid. It also has, like we said before, it has an inverse fund, which is interesting, not as liquid. So could, potential problems with that, but not with XBTF. But we look at where we are on the 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin chart. Let's get to that. Sorry, I popped away from that. And you can see where we are when it comes to, let me spread this out a little for you, where we are when it comes to the 200 EMA. We've got a ways to go before we move above that. We look at where we are on the two-day. We're still well below it there, too. Now, the half-day, we have been just sort of hanging around it here over the last many, many, many weeks. So Bitcoin's going to need to break out, going to need to start really moving up and, of course, passing up through this weekly 200 EMA. We'll watch, wait and see. Hopefully it is settling out somewhere around the $18,000 mark or so, and we'll just take off. We're waiting by hoping to see that occur. When it does, we'll be here for you calling that so you can practice trade it. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.